What's up guys, this is Heiss, and welcome back to Stories from the Shop. And this time we've got another story from Inner Bay for you. Or rather, well, a, a topic that spawned many stories, and we'll see how many I can get into off the top of my head. And that is Inner Bay being located in a big homeless population. I don't want to diminish the problem that homelessness is and all that and how much it affects society and you go to any big city these days and it's ridiculous how pervasive it is and how everywhere it really is. But uh, when you're just trying to do your job, it made for some very interesting encounters, uh, starting with the one from the thumbnail. Yeah, imagine you're me, night shift supervisor, just trying to get locomotives released. It's a weekend, it's early in the shift. So, you know, mid afternoon, whatever. And, uh, you're just trying to get the plan to put together. The locomotives are all broken. Like, you're supposed to release five locomotives a day. Day shift got their usual one with all of the manpower and management, of course. And here you are as the one-man army with all of your people trying to put together a plan to get the other four figured out so that you don't get a talking to from the, uh, the Eye of Sauron uh, over in <laughs> Mount Doom, a.k.a. Fort Worth, where uh, BNSF's headquarters is. Right. And so you're running around with your head cut off, talking to everybody, seeing where everything's at, because you're coming in mid-shift, trying to figure out what day shift a supervisor has assigned people to work on, and half the time it's wrong or they didn't give the right information, and you just throw your hands up in the air, and, and you run around with your head on fire for the first hour or so a shift at least. Then you kind of figure things out, and maybe things get smoother, and maybe they don't. But these little unscheduled occurrences these little things that happen can really throw a weird curveball into your day. And then, of course, everyone has to stare and watch. So, <laughs> I get a call from the lead man who's watching the camera as I'm running around the shop. We had one big uh, panda zoom camera that could stare around, and it was the, the local Eye of Sauron at Inner Bay. Uh, and all of the employees knew how to hide from it. It was hilarious. One of the, uh, you go down to the service track, and there was a chair stationed just out of the line of sight of the camera, and one of our elderly machinists would often find himself napping there. Hmm, shocker. He'd always go up and say hi, and then he'd say, Amen. Well, he was praying. That's why he was reclined and his eyes were asleep. Right, yes, you weren't sleeping, sure. <laughs> they know every trick in the book, believe me. But uh, like, he calls me because he's watching the camera, and he's like, Hey, there's a homeless guy climbing the sand towers. What? <laughs> And it's like, what? What do you? What do you mean? Did anyone like? Hopefully, nobody like talked to this guy because sometimes they were hostile, and you never know what substances some of these folks were on, and sometimes they could be violent or whatever. And so uh, it was frowned upon for the employees to go engage in these sorts of things. It was up to the supervisors, the uh, you know, <laughs> the the unenlisted, the uh, <laughs> what were we called? Exempt employees. Uh, we're supposed to go and deal with this sort of thing. So here I am trying to just get locomotives released, having to deal with why someone is trying to summit Mount Sand Tower uh, for unexplained reasons. And uh, as you see in the thumbnail, he's looking and staring up at the top of the tower and we call him down, finally get him down away from the trains and everything. And like, hey, there's train movements, everything going on. And this dude is like heavy breathing. He's freaking out. And he's like, Th those bad men, they took my wife. The bad men, they took my wife, and she they're holding her up there on top of the tower. They're locked, they locked her up there, I need to rescue her. And I'm like, your wife's not up there. This is a train yard, like, I hate to tell you, like, break that to you. I'm sorry to hear about your wife and the bad men that took her, but she's not here. And he goes, no, I saw her, she's up there, she's up there, I could see her. And so it's like, okay, well, point her out to me. And he points. He's pointing at the wind sock on top of the middle sand tower, and it's like, this guy is high as a kite. Holy crap. So we called Seattle PD. Like, we don't know what to do with this guy. Like, who wants to climb the tower? I don't want him to fall off the sand tower and die. <laughs> you know, like, what else do you do? So the police officer comes, and we sat there, and me and the police officer and the homeless guy chatted for a while about his wife and the bad men, and, and when I told him I was going to call the police to, like, get him away, he was like, oh, please do, please do so they can go get the men, and it's like, oh, man, you, you are having a very unfortunate time in whatever variety of trip you're having right now, friend. Ugh. <laughs> it's like, 
I feel bad for him. And obviously, like, I don't want to diminish homelessness and everything there and, and the state that some of those folks can get into, because I'm sure the, the trauma was very real to him at the time. But it's just one of those things of, like, I signed up to be a, a management trainee later, a mechanical supervisor at the, at the railroad shop, because I like trains. I thought we were going to fix trains, not help homeless man who's just high, drunk, everything all at the same time find his windsock wife that has been stolen by the bad men. <laughs> it's just like, what, 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 what even, what even, what even is going on right now, you know? That was not the only experience we had with homeless people. The, the interbay shop was right underneath a couple big bridges uh, that run across the rail yard, and it's a railroad yard, and it's kind of sunk down in. Uh, it's called interbay because it used to be a bay that the railroad filled in and built their yard there. And so the uh, original Interbay Roundhouse was actually below water level and had issues with flooding and things, so they built the new one in 1929, which is the one that still exists for who knows how much longer. We'll see. So there were lots of homeless camps built along the right-of-way, under these bridges, all over the place. It was a very common occurrence, particularly on night shift, that you would get all sorts of weird things like this. I had somebody climb, a homeless guy climb on top of one of the SD9s that was sitting in the deadline, pooped down the stack, drop, dropped pants, sat on the stack, and so um, hopefully that's not one of the ones that got sent to a museum or a tourist railroad. Fire that up for the first time. <laughs> uh, goodness. Although perhaps the most eventful was the one where one of my guys comes running into the office. It's right around second break time, about 8 p.m. Runs into my office and he's like, dude, there's a guy, there's a homeless guy who just fell off a train. Like, he needs medical attention. It's like, man, I don't want to have to deal with this right now. <laughs> to, when the employees have their one 10 minute break, that's the one time I can catch up on the computer crap and dealing with all of the supervisory things and everything else is on fire. You don't got to tell me that the, that the homeless guy has fallen off of a train now too. Okay, cool. Like, it was just, you're, the, you're already so stressed out in that position, particularly at Interbay, where you're the one guy running the shop that does all these different things and you're coordinating everything. It's It was really a different shop than a lot of the other shops. You go to the big shops and you've got a lot of locomotives to keep track of, but you're only keeping track of one flavor of things. If you're a supervisor at Kansas City, it's a big shop. There's a lot of guys, a lot of people to know, and that, that that's a whole different thing, and that's a different skill set. I'm not trying to diminish that either. <laughs> but you were just focused on one area, or maybe two areas. Uh, okay, you're in the high bays, people doing back shop work, people are down at the service track, and you focused on those areas, and there was, you know, five, six, seven supervisors at the low level on the shift, not even talking about upper management. And at Interbay, at least on seconds, it was just you. There was nobody else. Uh, later on, they eventually got an upper management person to be there for part of second shift. So you'd have an assistant general foreman with you sometimes, but it really was just up to you. And you were in charge of anything that happened in the zone. Like, oh, we have to send responders out because something slid a, an axle flat and locked up and got stuck two hours away from the shop. Well, guess what? Somebody's getting in the pickup truck and they're gonna go cut the pinion on that thing. You had to be aware of that stuff, anything going on out and around in the zone. You had to be aware of the service track, the power coming in, the power leaving, the consists that you had to build on the next shift, when the power was going to arrive uh, to the shop from the yard, when you were going to release things, the computer analytics side of when the releases were made so that you didn't get yelled at by the eye of Sauron. You had to do everything by yourself. And so you're like, you're being pulled 18 different directions. And so when the 19th direction that is the homeless man that fell off the train arrives, you're just like, uh, okay, what else is gonna happen today? <laughs> um, and so this was, this was another one where it's like, walk up to him and the dude had jumped off of a coal train that was doing 50 mile an hour. He jumped off, landed right at our shop, of course, because we're right next to the main. Uh, he blew his knee wide open, like compound fracture bone, like, ugh, that was not something that I was ever anticipating I'd have to see in my life, but we saw it. Um, he too, luckily for him, was probably high out of his gourd as well, because he didn't seem to be too bummed about it. He was more bummed that he lost his drum when he jumped off the train. 
So it was uh, an unfortunate thing for him that he lost his drum. <laughs> but it, it, you walk up to the guy and it's like, hey, wait, hey, what, what, what's going on? What happened? He's like, well, dude, I've been hitching trains since Colorado. I wanted to come up to Seattle. Uh, and I've been riding freight trains the whole time. And I'm like, you shouldn't be telling me that, but that's okay. Whatever, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yeah, and, and so I got on this coal train in Auburn, and then and then I saw Seattle, and then we just kept speeding up. I thought I was gonna stop, uh, so I jumped off, and now now I'm here. Uh, can you get my drum? I'm like, I don't know where you. I don't know what your drum looks like. I don't know where it is. You're you need medical attention. You're bleeding. You have a, a bone sticking out of your knee, where there should be a knee. <laughs> so it's like. Then of course comes the drama of the shop and all the employees stop working on the locomotives and they kind of stare from a hundred feet away like, oh look, look, look and see what's going on. How's Mark gonna deal with it? It's like, God, <laughs> let me help this guy. <laughs> uh, and so we got the paramedics, got a medical attention and then that was the last we saw of him. And, and did he collect his drum? I don't know, I hope he did. Uh, I hope he enjoyed his journey and I hope his knee healed, but it's just like, you would run into these situations all of the time. I mean, those were some of the more memorable ones. Uh, honorable mentions to the guy that showed up and wanted to charge his phone and tried to bribe his way into the shop by showing that he had a kitten that needed water. That was like heartbreaking. And uh, me as the empathetic individual that I am, I could like, I was not able to say no. And then one of the gruff third shift guys was like, no. So th then that solved that. Um, <laughs> and then the one lady that walked in um, walked into my office like she knew the place, signed in at the visitor's log, and then like started screaming at me and the guy that I was training, like a bunch of random <laughs> and then she just left. And it's like, what? And what'd she sign in? She signed in the log that she was on vacation. The visitor's log at the roundhouse. Yeah, always a strange time. Um, I'm imagining that a lot of the railroad shops of the, the universe have these sorts of issues because uh, they tend to be in the more industrial areas that are now tending to be more populated with homeless folks and things. And it really is a sad thing that, uh, that that's where a lot of individuals have ended up and, and substance use and all that is a whole thing. And yeah, we focus on the trains here, but uh, it certainly had an interface with me and my time at the railroad. So I hope you liked a couple fast paced stories about uh, homeless folks uh, and uh, the, the poor damsel in distress that was the windsock on top of the tower. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll catch y'all next time.